Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Zhang Du, uh, a PhD student from Stevens Institute of Technology, and my professor is Dr. Wina Mo. Today, I'm going to introduce about the effect of a sexotropy ultra high performance on the interfacial properties as a uh, bridge deck overlay. So, uh, the attached figures are our campus and live, and uh, we can fabricate, test, and uh, characterize the UHPC in our uh, advanced uh, concrete technology lab, and uh, which is uh, you can see on the river side of the Hudson River and uh, facing the midtown of Manhattan. So welcome to to, uh, to visiting our lab. So in general, uh, like the, the other speakers introduced before, the UHPC possesses a lot of uh, high mechanical strength. The 28 compressive strength is over over 100 and 20 megapascal, and 28 tensile strength, it can over 8 megapascal under standard curing. Uh, uh, particularly compared with uh, high performance concrete and the conventional concrete, the UHPC shows the string, ha string hardening behavior after cracking behavior, after cracking. So uh, besides, the UHPC also has super workability, so which requires pretty low construction energy to achieve very high construction qualities. And uh, the most importantly, the UHPC has exceptional durability, so which benefit the reduction of the life cycle cost. Because of that, the UHPC has been applied to many civil infrastructures uh, to extend the service life. Uh, for example, the overlay as one application attract a lot of tensions from recently from other states, uh, other DOTs. However, there still exists some issues of casting UHPC as an overlay. Uh, the first thing uh, we can see the overlay is usually, uh, uh, is usually a kind of a slope structure. So the, the self-consolidating UHPC uh, could not maintain its shape its shape on, on a slope structure. Uh, so maybe a lot of uh, foam works might need it. To reduce the foam works, the UHPC is expected to uh, stay still and uh, keep the shape on the slope structure with the minimum external support. Uh, therefore, uh, the self-consolidating UHPC has been modified to have high sexotropy properties. Uh, at the same time, the vibration is applied uh, because the lack of a flowability during the construction process. Uh, however, uh, both the sexotropy and the vibration can significantly influence interfacial pro bonding properties. So, uh, but the relative study is a uh, kind of limit uh, for that's why in this study, we try to figure out the effect of the effect and underlying mechanism of the sexotropy and the vibration on the bounding strength of UHPC overlay. So now we know that developing the UHPC with high sexotropy benefits overlay construction, but what is sexotropy and how to develop a UHPC with high sexotropy? So we can see here, the sexotropy is a time-dependent shear thinning property that behaves like solid under the sta static condition and changes to fluid by agitating or vibration. As shown in these figures, after placement, the sexotropy mixtures can hold its shape without external support. But the non-sexotropy mixture has a minimal slump spread around 280 millimeters. So, to develop the cementitious materials with high sexotropy, one of the effective methods is to add the nanoclay particles. Because the nanoclay has an immediate stiffening effect on the fresh UHPC, uh, which means the nanoclay can increase in immediately increase the initial static yield stress and the sexotropy as well. So it can help the UHPC maintain its shape after the placement. And the two uh, mechanism are uh, briefly summarized here. The first is a uh, physical effect. The surface charge of the nanoclay increases the rate of flocculation, which helps to, to generate a sexotropy. The second one is uh, the nano size of the uh, nanoclay can behave as a seeding effect to provide new nucleation sites for hydration process, which also help the development of the sexotropy. 
So for the use of the nanomaterials, the dispersion is always the uh, main problems. In our study, we use the type of liquid-based, well-displaced nanoclay uh, for the for the development of cytotrophy of the USDC. And the steel fiber is fixed at a two percentage by volume, and the water to binder ratio is fixed at a 0 0.23 by mass. And the proportion of the other uh, dry roll materials as shown in the tables and in the figure. And five designed USB, USB-C mixtures with different nanoclay content were investigated in this research. So first, we're gonna talk about the evaluation method for the static yield stress and the cytotropy of USB-C. For the static yield stress, uh, it was determined by the shear rate control method, you can see here, where the shear rate is controlled at the 0 0.025 RPS. And the, the evolution of the yield stress curves is shown in this figure, and the peak point represents, represents the static yield stress. And besides, the UHPC spectroscopy is uh, evaluated as a slope of this linear line, which is a relationship between the static yield stress and the, the test of time. Next, uh, we're going to introduce the evaluation method for the interface properties and the other performance of the UHPC overlay. Uh, according to the AASHTO uh, T100 and 32, the direct shear stress is used to test the bounding stress between the UHPC overlay and the subtract. And the test setup is shown here. And uh, other than that, the compressive strength of the gender shrinkage hydration was tested to under, understand the effect of nanoclay content on the performance of the UHPC. And previous researches indicate that the proper vibration could improve the interface properties between UHPC overlay and the substrate, but the effect is not quantified. So two vibration parameters are considered, and the first is the vibration amplitude, the second is the vibration time. So we can see the result here. The result shows the initial static yield stress and the sextrotopy of UHPC is highly dependent on the nanoclay addition. As the nanoclay content increased from 0 to 0 0.2 percentage, the initial static yield stress is increased from 400 and 5 pascal to 3,000 and 358 pascal, which increased, increased by 700 and 30 percentage. And the sextrotopy within the first minute is increased from 9.7 pascal per minute to 16.4 pascal per minute, which increased by 69 percent. We can see a significant in improvement. So we now we can see the effect of nanoclay addition on the other performance of UHPC. We can see as the nanoclay content increased from the from 0 to 0 0.2 percentage, the 28 compressive strength is increased by 7 per a percentage, and the 28 day autogenous shrinkage is increased by 25 percentage. The hydration heat results reveal that the addition of nanoclay promotes and, and accelerates the hydration reaction. That's why the uh, compressive strength and the autogenous shrinkage is improved. However, uh, the weaker interface was formed with the increase of initial stress, uh, initial static yield stress and sexotropy uh, due to the use of nanoclay. We can see as the nanoclay content increased from 0 to 0 0.2, the 3 day and 28 days bounding strength are reduced by 34 percentage and 23 percentage respectively. It is speculated that the, the fresh UHPC with high six entropy can see here the the initial static yield stress that the high initial static yield stress make the UHPC cannot fully fill the pores on the substrate surface, especially for some treated surface such as the sand blasted, grooved, and the hydro demolished surface. And the, the second speculation is that the increase in trapped air content in the UHPC overlay because uh, the addition of the, the nanoclay. So 
uh, the vibration was applied, which aims to improve the interface quality, uh, thus to improve the boundary strength between the UTC overlay and the subtract. Here in the first figure, we uh, propose a, a, a we propose a vibration energy which is defined as a product of the vibration amplitude and the vibration time. And the re uh, according to the results, we can see the bouncing strength first increase and then stabilize with the vibration energy and, and the optimal vibration energy for the best bouncing strength linear increases with the increasing of the nanoclay counter. We can see it's a very close relationship. It was speculated that, that the vibration released some entrapped air in the USB C overlay, and which can it can temporarily restore the flowability of the USB C overlay, which can refill the pores on the interface. That's why the boundary strength is improved. So, in order to uh, validate the speculation before uh, the micro uh, microstructure analysis on the interface. Uh, between UHPC overlay and the subtract is conducted through the uh, scanning electronic microscope test. Figure one shows uh, this one shows a representative interface between the cystroscopy UHPC overlay and the subtract. Uh, we can see there exists uh, there actually exists some pores on here and here, and the, the index pivot uh, was proposed. Uh, which is defined as uh, the ratio of the interface covered by air to the total length of the interface. Or in other words, we can see here, the pivot equals to the length of the blue line, which is covered by air, uh, divided by the sum of the blue line uh, and uh, the red line, uh, which, which means is uh, the total length of the interface. So, the SEM observation shows that at the increase of the nanoclay uh, from 0 to 0 0.2 percentage, the P voids will be increased from 3.5 3.5 percentage to 12.5 percentage. But after the optim optimal vibration, the P voids can be reduced to the 8.9 percentage. So it uh, the validation uh, the speculation we proposed before is validated. So in the end, uh, a brief conclusion uh, is summarized. The increasing the initial static yield stress and cystroscopy of UHPC by adding the nanoclay, uh, it facilitates the overlay construction and, and improves the mechanical pro uh, properties of UHPC by promoting the hydration. However, it can decrease the interfacial properties between the UHPC overlay and the substrate. So a minimum vibration time exists for UHPC, which has a specific uh, rheology properties to achieve the best bounding behaviors. Uh, the research in this study can help us to use uh, the proper construction energy, or we can see the minimum construction energy for a better quality of the UHPC overlay, and which also help us to uh, know the application of the high cystroscopy UHPC. So this work is supported by the U.S. Army and NJDOT. Uh, I also want to give special thanks to the uh, Ring Group from the Rutgers University. And uh, thank you all for the attention. That's all the presentation today. I'm happy to, yeah, to answer the, any question from. Uh, excellent. Uh, thank you, Shangdu, for uh, the excellent presentation and being part of this session as well. Viva, as I here too. Um, so I refer you to also to the Q and A session. So to answer any question people have. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so there's one question from the chat I would like to bring to your attention, and it is: um, Can you share with us the reasons you choose static yield stress over dynamic yield stress? Do you think the result strength would be similar if you would consider dynamic uh, okay. yield stress and hysteresis loops? So. Okay. Oh, I mean, uh, please give me a second to share the slide again. I mean, you want to see here, uh, why we select a static yield streets uh, instead of a dynamic yield streets, right? Yes. Because uh, uh, 
the the stat the static illustrates uh, represent the 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 state of the USPC when it stands still, right? So at this at that moment, the static illustrates will compete with the uh, uh, gravity effect. So if the static illustrates is lower than the uh, gravity, the the shape will be changed. Uh, they, it will flow to the it will change like this. If the at the initial state the static yield stress is lower than the gravity, the the shape will be changed. They will flow like the non-sixotropy mixture. But if the at the initial stage the static yield stress will be higher than the gravity, so the shape can be still. So that's why we select the static yield stress instead of a dynamic yield stress, as a dynamic yield sta dynamic static yield stress is a uh, is a parameter to evaluate the state of the USPC, which is uh, under the, which is flowable, I think. So that's why we select this one. 